was going vegan, I was jumping, dancing inside my little office myself. And I danced with my dog. I said, hey, you know what? The world's going vegan. The world's going vegan. <laughs> if you saw me, you think he must have something not correct in her mind anymore. <laughs> Maybe we should look for another master. <laughs> you try. <laughs> There's so many masters around, famous and no famous, a lot, a lot, a lot. Not a lot, a lot, but I mean, <laughs> quite some. Hmm? Yeah. Good enough for some people who like to do shopping. Mm -hmm. I also went shopping until I found Quanning Method and I stopped. Yeah. This one I don't know if I have, uh, have written to you or not. Uh, about undivided, undiluted attention? No. No, okay, you're lucky, then I can read it for you. In India, we have many kind of practice, and one of it is called uh, bhakti yoga, meaning devotional practice. Bhakti means devotion. You devote yourself to God. Uh, you haven't seen Him, but you devote yourself all your life to God, like those monks and nuns. That's also counted as bhakti yoga, yeah? All kind of monks and nuns in our world, whether or not uh, they are uh, Catholic, or Buddhist, or Hindu, Jain, or Sikh. These all belong to Bhakti Yoga, actually, because they devote their time and their life to the service of God and think of God alone, worship God alone, whether or not they can see or not see, they can feel or not feel, okay? And uh, they do get some experience, you know, it depends on, on how devoted they are and how one-pointed they can reach in their mind. But some monks or some nuns, they practice the whole lifetime and never go anywhere. Like some of the Zen monks say, if you continue to polish a brick, it will not become a mirror because they don't know <laughs> what the real thing is, not like you, lucky people. But bhakti yoga, in a real sense, is that you have to really be so devoted that you forget everything else around you. Yeah. One example is the Sri Ramakrishna. He already passed away. He's very famous, though. He is so devoted to the mother Kali, one of the goddess of Hinduism. Of course, people make a temple for her, né? just like other saints you know, in the past. Whenever you die, you have a temple. So that's why I told you I don't build anything anymore. The buildings already exist. We use it for the elderly or for some people who are not very well or children. And you guys bring your own house. Eh? Nowadays, everybody can bring own house, very cheap. Twenty dollars, you have a house. <laughs> Just bring it out, throw it in the air, and there you go. Uh, seal you from wind and rain, snow even. Yeah, wonderful. And you can take your bed with you, a uh, sleeping bag is all you need. Huh? <laughs> Plastic tent and a sleeping bag, then you are okay. Mm. When I was a so-called disciple in India, I don't even have that. I only have an umbrella. Yeah, and when it rains, I just sit under it. <laughs> and I'm still here, yeah. So this bhakti yoga is very uh, popular in India. And uh, even though many people are not aware of it, the devotee of different religions, they are practicing bhakti yoga. But the real bhakti is that you have to really have undivided attention to that object of your worship. And then you, you will as attain samadhi. Yeah, small samadhi, big samadhi, that's not guaranteed, but you will attain something if you really have undivided attention. And that's also one kind of practice, one of the 84,000 method of practice, yes. Uh, if you live long enough, you can try one by one <laughs> and tell me which one is the best. But I think the Buddha told us already, and Kuan Yin Bodhisattva told us already, and the wise uh, Manjushri Buddha told us already, etc., etc., many saints. 
already told us to practice Guan Yin method. And so we, we dumb dumb people, we just follow the same. This is the safest way, okay? And no other tantric, no uh, tantra, no karma, yoga, nothing. 